I can tell you right now, strapping anything to that wobbly idiot is a massive mistake. But I'm more than happy to oblige. I'm gonna put a whole bunch of tomatoes out in the middle of the road for them to run over, I guess? Uh, <laughs> you see what I mean? That's pretty much what I expected. Usually you'd be dragging a wagon, but in the horse's case, it's kind of a suppository. I thought there would be people inside, but I guess it's hard to get passengers when you say, all aboard the horse's arse. Oh, oh, uh, the horse is dead, but now it's strapped to the rider? What is happening to this thing? <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. That series that everyone loves, but I honestly thought I was done with for a little while. Because I thought I had seen everything, and been everywhere, and committed war crimes against hobbits in every way imaginable. But then I went to the workshop and realized I was very wrong. There definitely was a time when people were pushing the boundaries of what could be made in this game, but now I think they're just straight up breaking those boundaries. Like, I don't know how this is possible, but this is called the Sunflower, and it's made me realize just how uncomfortable day-to-day -day life would be if plants could judgingly stare back at you. Your guess is as good as mine as to what the hell this thing does, so I think I'm just gonna try to kill it with fire. And I know, okay, there is no type advantage in tabs. People are starting to get real pissed in the comments that I keep bringing it up. But at the same time, if I'm gonna fight a refrigerator-sized sunflower that could turn me inside out, I'm not gonna bring a watering can. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hopefully this works out. I would imagine it could uh, spit seeds at you. No? Maybe penetrate the old anus with a root? What is it uh, doing? Oh, it just got torched. It might have actually just been a, a real happy sunflower. Am I the bad guy here? There's a chance I may have overestimated this thing, okay? But it has to be able to do something, like, other than awkwardly blink at me and photosynthesize. So how about we try feeding it a hobbit? Maybe it's actually like a Venus flytrap in disguise? As opposed to when you zip your pants up too quickly, which would be a penis flytrap. <laughs> Speaking of which, please don't hump the plant. This is not what I wanted. You two can't be crossbreeding. I, I would prefer if the hobbits I bury don't grow back. <laughs> oh. What kind of weird WWE gardening is this? I've heard of green thumbs before, but you can't just shove a green fist inside of its ass. It just grew an ass. It's got legs and an ass. Okay, I'm thinking that it doesn't fight back. I've never wanted a plant to open its mouth more in my life. I figured I would try putting a bunch of them in rows, like you usually see sunflowers, whether it be in real life or Plants versus zombies, however you want to think about it, but there's a very small chance that they need to be around other units to do whatever it is they plan on doing. So hopefully they come up with something soon, because they're going to face off against the Razor Tank. I've always said this thing is like a lawnmower, so now is its chance to prove my point. I would say that, uh, oh, oh, okay, uh, did they all just turn to praise the sun? No, they're facing one another, because they're healing one another, they're healers. <laughs> that would be why they're so bad in a 1v1. I also kind of failed to realize there that this is the Razor tank with an upgrade, which means it has an RPG. Nobody uses rocket propelled grenades to mow their lawn. That's my bad. And here I was thinking we could move on to something a little bit more lethal than a flower, like a World War I fighter plane. But it turns out, having been built in World War One, that would make it uh, 105 years old-ish. The Alzheimer's is really kicking in. I have so many questions right now, but I don't want to describe what I'm seeing in detail because it could risk removing all ads on this video. Let me just ask this. Is it a Catholic plane? I'm pretty sure they don't call it a cockpit because you gotta have the pilot's cock pressed against the back of your head, but I'm gonna try shooting it down with bows and arrows. <laughs> Is that a mistake? Oh, uh, yeah, that, that might be a mistake, especially if you guys miss. Seriously, I, I know you're under pressure of machine gun fire, but <laughs> still, it didn't even move. How about we upgrade our firearms to muskets, okay? I, I know we're still incredibly obsolete in comparison to a machine gun, but at the same time, you can't 
possibly all miss. Bryce, you gotta have better accuracy than a pointy stick in the wind. I would hope you could hit the pilot at the very least, or his cuddle buddy, one of the two. This thing is already spazzing out, so I can't even imagine what's gonna happen if the plane falls in love with its pilot. <laughs> or the pilot falls in love with the co-pilot. Uh, just, just aim for the plane, would you? Guys, since when does it have a rocket launcher? <laughs> Good to know. Oh, we can't hit it because it's performing evasive maneuvers. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite as evasive as it would hope. If we get some cheerleaders on this side of the field, could we please hit it with a love arrow? It, it can't possibly back up. It's got a wing in the dirt. You guys got this. Come on, just close the distance. And fire those love arrows. This isn't gonna work, is it? it, it it's a skateboard grinding along the ground. What is wrong with planes in this game? Every time it touches the ledge, it just kamikazes. We might need to surround it. If there's one advantage to screwing around in the sandbox as opposed to doing stuff in the campaign, it's that you get to set the terms. And right now my terms are gang bang on the plane. Please shoot it. There we go. How you feeling, big guy? Feeling the love? I, uh, I actually think we made the plane fly better. How is that? Oh, oh shit, we pissed it off. Okay, I shouldn't have said that. My bad, my bad. Just... Keep keep the, the love coming. It's gonna take a nose dive into the water and become a submarine soon. <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, okay. Did it just pull a battlefield move? The guy fell out, took some shots, and then got back in. No, he didn't get all the way back. There he goes. <laughs> I love stupid units like this. You would never want to use it in a battle, but it is just broken perfection. I was told somebody improved Optimus Prime, but I assumed that meant that he would no longer twerk ghost splooge at people because it was really weird. That was Optimus on the left. Optimus on the right, the new one, just kind of looks worse. I mean, it kind of looks like a, a guy who dressed up for a Halloween party and then took a hit of acid. We're gonna have a Spartan Phalanx face off against the two Optimuses because I really want to see the comparison side by side. You know, we've got the G1 on the left, and then we've got Michael Bay's wet fart on the right. I'm sure it should be interesting. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Oh, he uh, he throws bombs. He's definitely a lot more deadly. New Optimus, that is. I, I don't know how I'm gonna refer to the two of them. I keep making fun of them, but not coming up with legitimate names. It doesn't matter. I don't want to use them, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> They're both weird. Speaking of weird, this unit is called Tomato. Has nothing to do with Captain Sauce. It's just a uh, sentient tomato. I feel like I should call my lawyer. I honestly think the strangest part about him is that he only costs 10. So, like, he's by far the cheapest unit in the game. You could have five tomatoes be worth one harvest. Uh, does he actually fight? Is he just kind of, oh, okay, yeah, he swings for the fences. Does what you would expect a sentient tomato to do, I suppose. Can he take this down? Did he just plant himself? No, okay, no, the, the hobbit planted his fist in his ass. <laughs> no, I had such high hopes for a cousin of mine. To be honest though, if it was a fair fight, it would have been 5v1. Because now it's 50 versus 50, even money. Come on, tomato gang, you've got this. Uh, strike one, friendly fire, that's not what we want. How did two of you die? Wait, what is happening? Half of you haven't even been hit by the hobbit. I'm sorry, since when are tomatoes made of glass? Finally, somebody connects a punch, thank you. I'm not gonna say that Jack Sparrow's Flying Dutchman isn't impressive. A well, floating ship is pretty cool, but at the same time, it's the size of a vault wagon. It seems a little bit off in scale, you know what I mean? Like, you would have to paddle it. Looks like we've got a mutiny on our hands. A whole bunch of flintlocks and blunderbusses and bomb throwers, and I'm apparently still nowhere near the value of that boat. How? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, cannons? Sure. Harpoons? Why not? We're still only half. Screw it. Go. What's the worst they could do, right? It's not like it's... Fires an inky blob. Oh, oh, okay. No, it's also got the strange like, butthole spikes. Since when? At least the cannons work. That's the other thing. You know, if you have a boat the size of a dinghy, when it gets broadsided, it's just gonna crumple. 
think the two of them would be able to take out pirate royalty? Like we face them off against Blackbeard and the Pirate Queen because it is two individual units. We got Jack and we've got the ship. Oh, Jack can deflect the volley and the ship seems to be trying to French kiss the queen. Okay, yeah, I wasn't really expecting the squid to open mouth somebody today, but what the hell is that? I'm sorry, where did this tiny goblin man come from? <laughs> <laughs> I'm clearly missing something here. Oh, that might be one of the staff. No, that's not the word I'm looking for. What do you call people on a ship? Crew, that's better. Staff would be more of a cruise ship. This next unit is called the Posse Wagon. Not really sure, but I know it shouldn't be confused with the Pussy Wagon. This one's probably gonna hurt a whole lot more. I can tell you right now, strapping anything to that wobbly idiot is a massive mistake. But I'm more than happy to oblige. I'm gonna put a whole bunch of tomatoes out in the middle of the road for them to run over, I guess. Uh, <laughs> you see what I mean? That's pretty much what I expected. Usually you'd be dragging a wagon, but in the horse's case, it's kind of a suppository. I thought there would be people inside, but I guess it's hard to get passengers when you say all aboard the horse's arse. Oh, oh, uh, the horse is dead but now it's strapped to the rider? What is happening to this thing? <laughs> the, the tomatoes have found a blind spot. They're, they're kind of between the wagon and the gun. Oh my God, they actually won. I mean, one of them won. It's a moral victory for the rest. <laughs> Anybody want a salad? I may have just had my best idea ever in tabs, and here's how it's gonna work. We're gonna start off with the biggest tornado possible, the Da Vinci tank, just gonna fly down the middle of this road, and it's gonna be met by a wagon posse of posse wagons. <laughs> so many of them, like, they have a real hard time moving around on their own to the point where I'm not even really sure what's happening. We'll find out anyway. Ooh, okay, yeah, uh, tornado, please get in the air. It got smothered. Oh my God, there's so much posse. <laughs> May have overestimated things a little bit there. I kind of want to just make it so that the units are invincible. Yeah, you know what, let's run it back, except for this time nobody can die, because like, the objective isn't to win or lose here. We're all winners if we see a horse get tossed around in high winds. <laughs> Even though, it's not quite what I expected. They already act like they're in a tornado. They're already tossing and turning and doing front and back flips to triple sow cows, so Da Vinci's not really adding anything, other than a whole bunch of littered cannonballs. <laughs> You never really realize how straight and white and perfect Barney's teeth are until somebody goes and replaces them with fangs and a bloodlust. I gotta be completely honest with you guys, even if it is the middle of the day, I don't overly want to run into five knights at Barney's in an alleyway. Like maybe we could just have the Minotaur take him out? Like the numbers are telling me it's not a fair fight, but I don't think math really knows what's up. You should be able to run him over. I mean, he's just a dude in a suit. Okay, maybe that wasn't entirely fair, Barney. How about we have you face off against a couple of angry parents? Or as I prefer to call them, peasants. <laughs> you got this, I'm, I'm sure you'll spook them. Seems reasonable. Oh, I was joking when I said he had a bloodlust, but it turns out he actually does. He sucks people dry. <laughs> well, the teeth tell a story. Now, I know it looks like some kind of weird furry parade right now, but I have a good reason for this. I couldn't remember if we checked to see what a vampire does against a mechanical unit. So if we had a bunch of super vampires or super barnies, whatever you want to call them, against something like the Da Vinci tank, would they be able to suck him out through the tank? Use the cannons as straws? I'm sure quite a few of them are going to get flattened. Okay, that, uh... That did not go as expected at all. Huh. So they got absolutely creamed, but they still managed to kill the tank with their giant foam bodies. <laughs> you, you never know what to expect with this game. 
I know quite a few of you guys already know this, but I feel the need to reiterate for anyone who's new here. I've never actually read Harry Potter. It's just not my thing. I watched the movies when they came out like 10 to 15 years ago. So I remember very little. All I know is there's a, there's a pig. It's got pimples, a hog with warts, something like that. You don't need to be a wizard biologist to appreciate Harry Potter against an M1 Abrams tank. This is a fight that I've wanted to see for a very long time, believe it or not. So let's see how he's going to handle a uh, tank shell to the tits. Didn't think that was going to end with a ring out. We might need a bigger map. You're not going to be able to escape your fate here, Mr. Potter. So let's see what you've got. You got to cast a spell, okay? You can't be taking high velocity rounds to the lips over and over again. Just try a wingardium. Leviosa, what the hell happened? Oh, <laughs> he didn't really do anything. He summoned a couple of witch skeletons. They evaporated, but then the tank decided to transition into a tin can. Well, it just exploded for no reason. He should be roadkill right now. Part of me wants to run that again, but deep down I know nothing is gonna change and I'm never gonna be able to top a freeze frame like this. It's just such a beautiful mess. How about we have a wizard 1v1 instead? The only problem with a wizard off is that Gandalf is worth 1200, whereas Harry is worth 51,000. So maybe I'll go ahead and make this a little bit closer to even. Yeah, I would imagine Harry should have his dancing shoes on. Do you need dancing shoes for break dancing? Maybe a dancing hat? Not entirely sure. Either way, he is uh, gonna be kissing the stratosphere. Oh, he survived. Oh, oh no, maybe not. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a unit survive this many wizard blasts. He doesn't really know how to re react. Even I can't follow the action right now. Like, how many times can a young boy re-enter Earth's atmosphere before he just calls it a day? If he hits the ground and doesn't clip through, I would be dumbfounded. Oh, they're not going to let him hit the ground. I I'm having a real hard time following the action. Is he? Wow. He went so far that he just straight up left our vision. I don't think I've ever had a unit go that far before. He clipped through the ground, didn't he? I mean, I knew it was only a matter of time, but I really didn't want this to end in a wizard orgy. <laughs> All right, just uh, avert your eyes, everybody. I was half tempted not to show this unit to you guys because you know, the battle's not gonna last particularly long, but at the same time, how can you say no to me riding around majestically on a horse and summoning God knows what. It seems only fitting that I ruin a field full of job bots and temp bots. Like, again, this isn't going to be much of a fight. I get the feeling the game could very easily crash, but that's what we're all here for at the end of the day. Hopefully I don't fire too many presents. I'm not firing anything. I'm, I'm getting absolutely worked right now. Okay, it's a good thing I'm really strong. They, they have so much breakdance electricity. No, come on, Sauce, you got this. Throw one of the presents, you stupid tomato-headed idiot. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Wobbly horse, get me out of here. I'm just throwing tomatoes. Why am I not throwing the presents? Oh, you know what the problem is? The horse has the presents. I have tomatoes. I'm just trying to throw fruit at them. Meanwhile, the horse doesn't want to summon anything for me. <laughs> so... What, am I just going to keep breakdancing my way into the atmosphere? I don't want to watch this forever. Of course, Jobbot would screw things up for me even years after I stopped playing his game. It is so warm in here today that my brain feels like soft serve ice cream in the sun. So I, I think we're going to end things off with hooves on the ground. But you know what? I think that's going to be it for this episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, guys. And once again, thank you so much for recommending units, for making units, for watching the videos. It's the reason that the series keeps going. Because I, I was being honest, like if there's nothing else for me to show you guys, if there's nothing else for me to do, then I'm just not going to play the game. I'm going to play something else. But if you guys want to see more, as always, be sure to leave a like in the video, leave a comment letting me know, keep making stuff, and maybe I'll return to actually throw some presents again soon. Well, thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.